and welcome to another fun-filled episode of Africa's God. I am your host, Manina Dambell. On tonight's episode, we've got Gambian BAFTA-nominated actor, Babu Sisse. UK, raised in the Gambia. He studied microbiology at the Imperial College in London. He was also nominated for a BAFTA in 2017 Best Actor. Welcome the legend, the talent, Gambia's own Babu Sisse. Are you definitely Gambia's own? I am Gambia's own. I was born in Britain. We only spent about 10 months after I was born in the UK. Then we came to Gambia, I uh, attended Mrs. Ndau school and then eventually Marina. When I was about six, my father got a job in Togo. We moved as a family and I spent 10, 11 years and we came back to Gambia at that point because there were some uh, military problems in Togo. So we came back, I went back to Marina, spent two years there, made great friends, had, you know, an extraordinary experience, became a bit of a nongo. <laughs> learned how to sort of be in the Gambian uh, culture, which was great. And yeah. then um, at that point, I was supposed to go to England to study when I finished my O-levels. But um, my dad changed his mind at the last minute. So I ended up back in Togo, did two years there, did my international baccalaureate, which is the equivalent to the A-levels. And um, once I graduated, I then finally made the move to the UK. I was planning to be a doctor. I wasn't sure how committed I was to six years of training to be a doctor. At that wow. point, I just went off to do um, a degree in microbiology and got into the machine, basically, of education and then afterwards work. When did it click for Babel? When did you say to yourself, this is not what I want to do. I would like to pursue the acting side of things. I've made the decision that I'll, I'll pursue it after I've had kids, put them through school and done all the right things. And don't get me wrong, I was in drama school with someone who'd done that, who waited until she was 60 before she started. My first audition was at the Oxford School of Drama where I ended up going. And I went in an audition and they offered me a second round. So I went wow. in the second round, a recall, and they offered me a place. 18 of us out of um, almost a thousand people. You went to drama school, you got accepted. Yeah. Tell us about your first role in Macbeth. We had a showcase in London where you perform two pieces to the industry and people get invited. And the director for Macbeth couldn't come, but his assistant came. And she said, I saw a few actors today that we really need to see for these roles. He saw us and didn't cast us, but he wrote a nice letter to our school saying, these people are great and they're not right for it right now. He went for more experienced actors. And I just got a call out of the blue from the director. One day I was in a Thing and he remembered me from my audition and said, come and re-audition for the part because the roles become available again on our next version of it. Um, wow. They'd already done it once. So I went, auditioned and got the part. I had three half day rehearsals. Usually it's six weeks or four weeks. I had three half days. That was it. That's what all I had to prepare for the part. I had to learn it, be ready. They threw me onto the stage with the other actors who already knew the role. I can't tell you the stress. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that shows. I just threw myself. Showed you know. What are you going to do? And then, yes, um, Gail Stevens, the casting director for Severance, saw me in that. They called me in for an audition. The director and everybody thought, this guy's not an actor. They, they actually thought, this guy's an accountant, <laughs> which would have been right. But they sort of didn't expect much from me and didn't see much in terms of what I did. But later, his, he was watching back the tapes with his girlfriend at the time, she's now his wife. And she saw my tape and went, that's your guy. And so he brought me in for a recall, we improvised some scenes and then they cast me. We're going to take our first break now. And when we come back, we will talk about when you started getting the roles in uh, the UK. You know, the Dummy Lola series, Severance, AD and those sort of things. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.
we were talking to Babu Sisi, BAFTA nominated Best Actor, and um, we were talking about his childhood. We were talking about um, how he got into acting, how he got motivated. We spoke about your first role, Babu, which was on Macbeth. And now, Babu, um, I'd like to talk about the other roles you did after Macbeth. But we spent a month in Hungary, up in the mountains, in this secluded place, um, Parat Shachmar. Great place, lovely place. I had no experience. I didn't know how to hit my mark. I didn't know how to do all sorts of things. I had terrible comedy timing, you name it. But I was lucky. I was surrounded by a really friendly cast who cared and who looked after me. Tim McInerney was um, one of those, he was, he was on Black Adder. He'd done quite a lot of work, he was very experienced. So he was playing my boss in it. He just looked after me. He would literally be like, don't do it like that. No, no, no. The way to do this is like this. He just mentored me in that sense, which was great. In the end, you know, the two months pass by and you think, I've done it. That's now in the can. And you wait a year for it to come out. Severance is a fun film, so people enjoy it for what it is. It's a horror comedy, so a wow. great genre. The role that you did in AD. Right. Being a Muslim man and then pl playing one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. How was that for you and how did you prepare? It wasn't a difficult process at all. I got there, you get your scenes. There might have been a little bit of pressure on the first few days where you feel like everybody's there. NBC who are funding it, everybody's there and they're watching. They want to make sure it's working. We were an ensemble. There's 12 of us there, the disciples and six core disciples, we kind of looked after each other. And the lady playing uh, Mary Magdalene, Chipo Chang, I'd worked with her many times before. We shot it in Morocco, six months out there. It was amazing. Um, I actually love Morocco so much now because of the six months I spent there. The AD was a big turning point for me mm. because before AD, I was doing a lot of theater, bit parts here and there. That year that I did AD, was when I decided, I decided I was gonna do a, a, something that was filmed, a film and to have a good supporting role in it. And I also wanted to do a series and I wanted to have a recurring character. That's a character that doesn't just appear in one episode, appears in more than one episode. And you know, I want it to be a regular. This means appearing in all the episodes or at least, you know, 70% uh, of them. And thank Allah, it happened. <laughs> so I yes. ended up doing um, Eye in the Sky in South Africa with Helen Mirren. So you got your lead role that you wanted, playing yeah. Damilola Taylor's dad. Damilola Taylor, for those who don't know, um, was a Nigerian boy who uh, was living in Peckham. Unfortunately, he got stabbed to death and it, it became headlines all over the UK and internationally as well. And you played Damilola's father. Not only that, you spoke Yoruba in the, in, <laughs> in the, in, in the film. I spoke Yoruba badly in the film. <laughs> I think people from the Yoruba tribe know. My, my uh, oldest sister's married to a Yoruba man, so I sent him all of the lines and said to him, can you please pronounce this for me? And then by rote, I just practiced and practiced and practiced. But on set, we also had a Yoruba expert who um, walked up to me and said, you are destroying my language. <laughs> and said, look, can you, can you please, you know, most people won't know, but the, the Yoruba people are not going to be happy with what you do. <laughs> So, yeah. but you know, I, I, I just tried my best. That's all you can do. And then in the end, during the edit, they layer and layer until it sounds actually possible. But yeah, in terms of the role, um, you know, Sir Richard Taylor is such an iconic man, such a phenomenal human being. Uh, yeah. And I've been involved with him, as in I've seen him quite a few times since the film. So 2006, you did your first premiere, Severance. Yeah. And then we go down to 11 years later, and you officially joined the big boys. You were nominated for Best Actor at the BAFTA. Obviously, the role of Richard Taylor was very special to me. I took it very seriously because of the history and because we want to honor Damilola Taylor. So everybody on the team, behind the camera, in front of the camera, all the actors, everybody wanted to do justice to this story. And when we were filming it, we weren't thinking of BAFTAs. It felt like here's a 90 minute film about a true story and that's what we focused on. And then during the screenings, I met Richard Taylor 
and saw the film. And I think at that point, we knew that it was a very impactful film and it was going to be a powerful watch. Then it came out and the public really reacted very well to it. But I say, well, they watched it and it did what it was supposed to do. And it was, the film was smart. It focused only on the family. It didn't focus on the perpetrators at all. I don't yes, think they even yes. caught them in it. Mm -hmm. So that was great. We are going to take another break. And when we come back, we'll talk about when you decided to go to um, move on to um, LA and you started doing amazing stuff with amazing actors. We'll be right back. Babu Sise and he's been telling us about his career. How was that for you working with one of Hollywood's greatest actresses? It was fantastic. She's a very talented human being. I witnessed some things on that set that really made me see people's ability. I mean her ability to learn lines was something like I've never seen. She'll look at a scene that's been rewritten straight away and absorb it all and just perform it. It's the second real human being I've played. So Bill Riddick exists. It was daunting. And Taraji wasn't the only one there. Obviously, there was Sam Rockwell as well. He's a fantastic actor and a very kind man. It's now actually The Best of Enemies is really making a splash because it's on Netflix. Yeah, it was such a fantastic experience. It was scary as well, don't get me wrong. Me being on a set pretending to be American for the first time in my life, really. As in, I'd already done Free Fire, which yeah. I played an American in, but I was shot in England. So it's quite different in being in America, being in and amongst it. And Taraji's uh, acting coach was with me and she helped me with my accent daily. You did one with my own favorite, Idris Elba. Idris is Idris and he's bringing up, and his production company, Green Door, was part of it as well. He's part of, you know, he's helping black stories get told, black talent yeah. move up. So there I am leading a show. He wasn't even the lead in. You see what I'm saying? He's that generosity of spirit. You can't, you can't discount it. And the show gets made because of Idris. Wow. Because Idris Elba is the guy behind it. Yeah, I love the guy. Power to the people. You decide to leave the luxuries behind and move back to Gambia. I left the stresses, the cold, the uh, expenses, <laughs> the, uh, the mental pressure, the emotional mm -hmm. pressure, the being a black person in a sea of white, I left all of that behind for the luxuries of life in Africa. You know, I've got a production company. I came home because I want to start working on that. So even though, like, in a couple months' time, I'm actually going back to the UK to film my next role, um, the reality is that once that's done, even while I'm doing it, I'm still building what I came to Gambia to build. Yes. And I'm not doing it alone, you know, I've got contact with um, a filmmaker in Nigeria, I've got contact with a filmmaker in Uganda, and these are a filmmaker in South Africa, so I'm in the process of growing that network. I obviously have some contacts in Morocco. I just want to get to the point where the continent as a whole sees and treats the film industry as an industry. What, what are your thoughts with regards to the industry in Gambia, but especially in Africa at the moment? What, what I realized you... in Gambia is that there isn't really a film industry. Now that doesn't mean people aren't making films and making brilliant films. They're just not an industry because industry is ultimately about the uh, flow chain from product to providing the service. And so ultimately, um, if you're going to make a film in Gambia, you've got to sort of also think about where that film's going to end up. At the moment, the model is very simple. You make a film and you screen it for your friends and you get them to bring as many people as possible so that they pay tickets and you try to recoup your funds. Now, obviously, yeah. you're not gonna spend a million dollars on a film like that because if you do, you'll never get it back. No. 
Because of they course. have to raise that amount of money to be able to. So the standard of film hasn't yet reached the global level. But the reason it hasn't is because there's no market yet. And what I'm what I try to do, I, I um, called this meeting, and we all met at the Alliance Francaise. A surprise, a hundred people turned up. I expected far less. And there was a producers' guild, an actors' guild, and everybody was talking. And we talked about what's important, really. And I tried to get them to see the industry side of it. I mean, I'm doing my own work here, but I wanted to understand the industry as a whole. What does the industry do? And one of the things I pointed out was that if you look at England, England doesn't just make movies for the British market. They sell it to America. They try to sell it abroad because if you don't, you're not going to recoup your uh, your expenditure. So yes. that's the sort of um, thing I've been doing is trying to to build the industry here. Now that has like several layers. One, you want to engage with government um, because you want government to see its value and see that it can be an industry. We don't just have to rely on tourism agriculture. You can yes. rely on a film industry. Um, it can generate income. Of um, course, like it's doing for Bollywood. You know, at Bollywood, the moment, Ghana, Nigeria, America, they have Netflix, Rwanda as well, Sierra Leone, yeah. Exactly. It, it has potential and something is happening on the continent with regards to the industry. So to be part of it is exciting. Like yesterday, um, Variety put out that Netflix have bought four new things in Nigeria, um, three films and one TV show. So there's definitely a push in terms of Netflix to uh, grow their market in Africa. And Gambia, not only Gambia, I think the whole continent, but Gambia, because this is where I am, needs to be part of that conversation. My feeling is that I want it to become an actual industry. And in order for it to become an industry, we need to have um, platforms that are interested in buying material. So there's a whole chain from writing a script, which I've just finished my first script, and I'm focusing on building that. I've actually been sent a couple of others from other parts of the continent. And I saw a local film here, Mebet, which I'd love for it to be developed into a feature. So I'm just trying to get involved and look for who the talented people are. Initially, you're supporting two or three people to build up a platform for them so they can create a good script, create a good sort of bit of material that people believe they can actually execute. And then you want to pitch it to Netflix. You want to pitch it to all of the best people in the world to say, listen, here's what we want to sell. And I want Gambian film showing in China. I want Gambian film showing in India, Australia, America, England, and not just Gambian films across the entire continent. Like, we don't like saying this, but Gambia as a country, fine, we're part of a bigger whole in terms of with Senegal, but we are smaller. So the reality is if you just want to depend on Gambia for industry, you're not going to make it. It's going to be very difficult to, to sustain it and to create jobs for people. So ultimately what you want to do is um, be in collaboration with a much bigger crowd. So it might be just ECOWAS countries, but you might go further and connect with the whole continent. What is next for you with regards to your acting, Hollywood, the UK? What's next? Well, I've, I've been cast in this uh, Sky TV show um, called Wolf, and I'm gonna go shoot that in a couple of months, for a few months over there. There's another TV show I just did last year called We Hunt Together. It's showing on Showtime in America, an yes. alibi in the UK that I think they wanna go for a second series. So provided it clashes with Wolf, so provided if they can shift their schedules, then I'll carry on and do that too. Maybe, I'm not 100% sure how that will work out. My aim is I've written a screenplay. And that screenplay is now with my agents. I have to do another rewrite, um, but it's in good shape. And it's about trying to get to the point where it can be financed and made. Mm -hmm. They can come over, we can shoot it, we can put it into the pipeline along with everything else, you know. Um, that's my goal. And over the years to come, I want to make sure that, you know, every couple of years or so, the TV shows I've got in my brain, the films that I've got in my brain, the people that are coming in with their ideas, we're able to take them from ground zero, develop them to a point where they can get made. That's my plan. So, you know, I've been to LA, I've been to all of these places, I've seen them, they're great. You know, I've been to Cannes. It's no longer about going to those places to promote someone else's film. Um, yeah. I'd very much like it to get to the point where I'm very much in the group of people who are bringing that film there. You are a legend, you are one of Africa's best, and I am proud to say Africa's got Babu Sisi, greatest of our time. Thank you so much for joining me, Babu. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Africa's Got, where we celebrated and told the story of a phenomenal son, Babu Sisi. 
Join us next time where we tell you more amazing motivational stories from the continent. Please join us on our social media platforms where we discuss this episode and many more. Oh,